Brian Powell of I Run Far here with Sage Kennedy before the 2016 Western States 100. How are you, Sage? Ah, uh, to be honest, my butt's a little sore. Sandy and I just went uh, <laughs> stand-up paddle boarding out on Lake Tahoe for an hour. And I, I only fell in twice. Sandy didn't fall in at all, but it works you in places where you didn't even know you had muscles. Like, Is that a good thing to be doing? Uh, uh, I'm glad we did it today Wednesday instead before. of tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> it was it was fun. It, but you, know, you it's, should... It's uh, beautiful out here. It's my first time out here, so have to enjoy uh, the scenery. But no, I'm, I'm healthy. Uh, just really happy to be here and excited. Yeah, um, a, about two months ago, a month and a half ago, you were out at uh, Transvolcania, yep. finished third again, um, yep. which shows you're in good shape. Mm -hmm. You're fit, you've uh, you've started building your endurance from uh, your sort of marathon pursuits. Um, how have you progressed with your training since Transvolcania? What have you focused on? Oh, I had to recover after Transvolcania really? yeah. first. Yeah, that was, that was brutal, it all, it's a big challenge there. Um, I mainly, I actually focus on less vertical. Mm -hmm. Transvolcania is, you know, the vertical profile always is an emphasis, but then, you know, periodizing the training, heading into state, since I knew it on, I had it on the calendar and it's a big focus, tried to recover and then just kind of extend the long runs, do a couple long runs actually over 30 miles, which is rare for me. Mm -hmm. And then to just do a couple like pretty focused downhill workouts, probably not enough, but I tried. Yeah. Um, because I learned that was a big weakness at Transvolcania. It's, it's always been a weakness of mine. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just more runnable stuff. Uh, I mean, nothing intense, but just, yeah, I got some 120 mile weeks in, yeah. which is big for me too. So, I mean, like, on the downhills, like, what, what were you focusing? Because obviously Transvolcania is known for, I mean, it is steep and it's 8,000 feet. These are slightly more runnable. What kind of yeah, stuff are you doing on the descent? Definitely runnable stuff. So, like, roads um, or, like, the more tame trails in Boulder. Most of Boulder's trails are pretty technical. Uh, like coming off Green Mountain or something, mm -hmm. but I just get rolling on some of the the dirt trails and, and the more runnable stuff, not super steep grade. I uh, just kind of pound the legs up. Now on the the long runs, you said you did a couple runs over 30 miles. Were they hard efforts or were they just rolling through 30 miles? What did they look like? Uh, those were pretty relatively easy efforts. Mm -hmm. uh, usually I do my long runs pretty hard, but the first one I did actually was when I came out for camp, the Memorial Weekend Day camp out here. Mm -hmm. uh, we did Robinson Flat to Forest Hill. Uh, so I was, I was just filming with my camera and uh, enjoying it, getting a, mm -hmm. a, a you know look at the course. And then I did one in Boulder a couple weeks later that was also pretty chill, pretty relaxed. Um, nothing too intense, just get the miles in, spend the time on my feet. Gotcha. Um, if you look at the splits, I mean, the one I did in Boulder is still faster than way faster than what the pace you could sustain here for 100 miles that's for sure yeah um how have you felt with uh nutrition in race nutrition in some of your your longer efforts in the past like how was your nutrition going at utmb before things you know before you fell i was going great my stomach was was rock solid i i was feeling good energy um yeah no i've, I've always felt really solid uh well, not, I shouldn't say always. At the North Face 50, I was puking my guts out. But uh, that was because I had too much too much coke too early, I think. But no, it's, it's you know, a lot of V Fuel gels and then uh, staying hydrated, um, eating things like bananas and then solid potato chips usually work pretty well with me. And then uh, some soda as so well. So you will make some, some solid food in there. Yeah, yeah, I really like, like at Transvolcania, uh, I learned that I could grab bananas from aid stations and uh, bananas would work really well for me. Zach Miller diet? Yeah, oh, a lot of people's <laughs> no, diet. No, I yeah. Fruitarian diet, uh, yeah. Um, it's a good fuel, fruit. <laughs> so obviously there's a pretty good chance that it's going to be either hot or very hot on Saturday. Um, how have you fared in the heat in the past? Um, I mean, I've never been in races this hot, mm -hmm. like 90, 100 degrees, but I consider myself more of a hot weather runner. Like, I hate the cold. I hate being, like, bundled up. And I get hy I got hypothermia at Yurok uh, a couple years ago when it was in Colorado. Mm -hmm. I hate anything, like, below 50. I'm just, like, I'm cold. So, like, I, I, like, I think I could suffer pretty well in the heat. Um, I mean, Black Canyon, it was probably around 80. And that was coming. We came straight from Boulder in February. It was, eight, it was like, freezing 20 degrees. And we go mm -hmm. into Black Canyon outside of Phoenix. It's, like, 80 degrees. Uh, and I, I felt pretty decent there without any heat training, so I think I just I kind of like the the heat usually. So you're not too worried about it. I'm worried about it. Uh -huh. I'm scared shitless. <laughs> <laughs> no, the I mean the heat's one thing, the weather's one thing. Uh, the distance scares me. The downhills scare me. Yeah, it's 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 gonna be a big challenge. Now the last time you you did 
the one and only time you've suited up for 100 miles is UTMB last year, and you you fell and had to, to pull out of the race. Um, what sort of feeling does that leave you? Do you are you aiming to finish this one, or does it leave you with like, you know, vengeance on the 100 mile distance? What what mental state do you approach this this distance? Uh oh. Whoa. Moment here, because that's how we roll. All right. It's a little windy no out, hurt. guys. No, got hurt. no, beers are still here. Let's. Uh, we make closer because of the mic. Yep. Ah, we're good. All we're right. Good here. All right. Perfect. Uh, it's not. No, I would say vengeance. I mean, I, I feel like the hundred mile distance. I want. I want to complete it. I want to show I could. I could go the distance. Uh, it, it left me more puzzled. Like, what would have happened at UTMB? If I didn't fall and bust open my knee, yeah, um, I would have predicted I would have slowed down a lot in the second half because that lead pack at UTMB is vicious. Like, it, they take those hills out so intensely. Like, there would have been carnage the second half, but I, you know, I was feeling pretty decent. And mm -hmm. I like to think I, I would have been able to finish and, and finish well, but you know, it's a lot of what ifs. So, like, it's uncharted territory for me beyond 62 miles. And yeah, the first goal is just to, to finish and complete the distance. The second goal is to try to place as well as possible and, and be competitive. And the third goal is kind of a time goal, but usually, you know, with the place comes a pretty fast time unless it's really, really hot or yeah. a really strategic race. But, you know, well, I want to be competitive. That's that's the main thing that drives me. That's why I do this race is a competition in the history and the cool people. But uh, it's not necessarily because it's a hundred mile distance. It's because it's a really historic race in the US that a lot of the top guys do that I really want to do it. The distance is an added bonus. Yeah. Um, do you have the sense that when you ran UTMB, you, you came into Cormier, you were cut up, you probably shouldn't have gone on. Was there a little bit of, you know, you just want to finish a hundred mile or that you ended up going on at that point? Exactly. No, exactly. I, I, at that point, I mean, I've been walking for the last 10 miles, like the descent into Cormier. I was, well, I was going slower on the downhills than the uphills because my knee was like swollen and that was the problem was the joint pain. Yeah. So like I had been suffering out there, like 20 guys me, but I still wanted to finish and that was the goal and I was like, I don't care if it takes me 40 hours, uh, I'm gonna keep doing it. But after I got to the top of the next climb, like I was moving up well, I could power hike uphill. The downhill, I, I was literally moving like a quarter of a mile an hour mm -hmm. and I was worried about permanently damaging my knee. And so that's when I pulled the plug and they brought out the helicopter and they don't bring out the helicopter for just any reason. It's, no. it's not something to take lightly. But it, yeah, it was an experience. Now, you mentioned that you, you know, maybe have a time goal. Is it one that you could share or uh, uh, is that sort of in your head? I mean, it, it depends on the weather really and, and what other people do, I guess. I mean, I like to, if you look at the all time list, I'd like to, you know, rank really well. But I think just placing well in this race, uh, is gonna lend itself to a pretty good time. It could be, uh, let's say 15 hours something, uh, maybe, you know, it could be a sub 15, I'm, but I might not finish, so I don't know. Yeah. Um, I will say like, just being a really competitive person, I would be a little disappointed if I wasn't first place. I'm not saying I'm gonna get first place, I'm not saying I'm gonna finish, but even if I got second place, I think something inside me would be a little bit disappointed. I, I'm just that competitive. Like so, I want to, I want to be in it to try to win. That's that's just kind of so my competitive gonna, nature. Yeah. If I'm cutting through the bullshit and I'm being honest, that's that's what I feel. You're not gonna run for you know fifth or sixth because it's you know be your first hundred finish and no. Well, if I if I implode in the middle of the race and maybe I'm trying to fin I'm trying to finish as efficiently as possible regardless. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, there's so many guys that that could blow by you at the end and, and finish way ahead of you. you you don't know what's going to happen there's yeah. a lot of variables now what's interesting this year i think is that there's a bunch of sort of maybe newer people who are kind of favorites like you and david laney is only a couple hundreds under his belt jim walmsley do you think that gives each of you kind of a better chance that you know anything can happen more or is more like uh, you know, it's interesting looking at like the, your preview and the, the top runners and speculation I've seen on the internet. Uh, all these guys, all the, all the names, all these people, we've all raced each other before. Yeah. Like multiple times for most of them. So like, there's no one new really. Uh, what's new is the distance yeah. for a lot of people. And so yeah, that's that'll be interesting. The, the distance and the nature of the course, the elevation profile being a net downhill race. I wish the race ran backwards. <laughs> um, but you know, it, it, 
Boston Marathon is a net downhill and I've, I've run well in Boston before. So this is like a huge exaggerated Boston Marathon kind of. Not really, but <laughs> <laughs> it's a net downhill a little bit. You know, 300 feet, 400 feet, yeah. over 20,000 feet, whatever. So since this won't air until uh, after the polls are closed, um, the, the Iron Far Prediction Contest has you as the favorite for, oh. uh, for this weekend. Wow, um, I'm flattered. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you think that, that puts any more, you know, do you feel strange that you've never run 100 miles and would be the favorite, or does it feel like extra pressure, or? Uh, I, it's, that's really cool, I think. Thanks, guys. Uh, I don't know if I'd bet money on that, but, uh, <laughs> no, it's, I, I like the pressure. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, you know, having a, like, I'm really active on social media. And, uh, that's kind of like part of my personality is I, I love social media marketing and being online. So maybe, mm -hmm. you know, with name recognition, people might be more likely to, I guess, to vote for me just because I'm posting on Twitter all the time and <laughs> YouTube and stuff. <laughs> Uh, I hadn't noticed. Yeah, I, <laughs> Instagram. Um, but yeah, no, I, it's it's an honor to be considered to, to be a favorite or to even be considered for being a, in, on the podium. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there's there's other guys like, like Jim who've never run 100 that's also, I think, has a strong consideration, and sh he should, um, as well as, you know, tons of other guys. Yeah. So, now, I don't know. Now, this is your first 100 where you can have pacers. Uh, what does your pacer and crew lineup look like here? Yeah, so uh, crew lineup, Sandy's out here. She just did Broken Arrow last weekend, won the, the 26K race by mm -hmm. quite a bit out in these, these hills right behind us. Um, and my parents are coming down from Oregon, so the, they're going to be dialed on the crew. Uh, Ginger Runner's going to be filming a project, film project. Then my actual pacer, I wasn't going to have a pacer at first, but my buddy from college, Joel Frost Tift, uh, he lives in California now, and he's he's been getting into ultras. He's done one ultra before. It was American River. Mm -hmm. He won it two years ago. Uh, he's like a he's a 222 marathoner. He ran with me at Cornell. Uh, he's like, can I be your pacer? And I was like, can you carry a GoPro and film me? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, yeah. And so I'm, I he's gonna try to he's gonna pace me from Forest Hill to the finish. So that's the plan. Cool. Yeah. Uh, do you think it's? I mean, you've never run with a pacer before, have you? You know, I did actually at, at Tarawera, Tarawera, New oh, Zealand. that's right. Uh, Carrie Suter uh, volunteered to pace me the last stretch. And it actually really helped, like, the moral support. Um, he mainly kept me from, like, getting lost and, like, you know, telling people that we we're coming around a blind turn not to crash into people and stuff like yeah. that. But he could point out potholes and stuff like that. So it, uh, it helped moral, you know, I think that the moral support is, is pretty big. I, yeah, it'll be fun, I think. I mainly want him to film with the GoPro too, <laughs> but he's 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 looking into getting to, into ultras and hundreds, so he really wants the experience, and he'd love to run Western States. Is that kind of fun My to favorite. share that with one of the, one of your teammates? Yeah, yeah, because we go way back, you know, training together for track in college, and he's a cool guy. So There's kind of a special it's, bond it's fun. with those guys. That yeah, yeah, no, it'll be really neat. Oh, what are you looking forward to most this weekend? Uh the beer at the finish line. <laughs> Why wait for the finish line? <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, hopefully executing the the race that I've dreamed about and and placing well and, and running a, what I think is a well paced race and not you know having any big mishaps happening happening no helicopter evacuations hopefully and making it to the finish line um, but also yeah just trying to get the most out of myself and really putting forth a good effort uh, I kind of I enjoy like. The dark spots and the pain, this kind of sounds cliche, but like that's where you kind of find flow. Mm -hmm. And I, I found that I kind of like, I really remember those moments in races where you're dialed in, mind and body's connected and you find flow and it, you feel the pain really intensely too, but sometimes you get so absorbed in the race that it's like, it's all kind of like a dream coming together. And if you do well, you remember that like forever. So it's, it's always a really fun experience to do something like that, but it, so a lot of times it doesn't happen. So you don't know. Best of luck finding that Thanks. this weekend. I'll need it. Uh, yeah. Enjoy it out there. Thank you.